I've talked about my sister's upcoming wedding in a couple of my previous videos now. We're all pretty excited for it, and it's been a big focus of the summer for us. I kind of felt like I wasn't doing too much to help in these last couple months leading up to the wedding. So I told her a while back that if she needed help with anything, or if there's anything I can make for the wedding, to let me know. And she actually said she was having trouble finding a candlestick holder for the centerpiece up front, and wondered if I could make something. This sounded like a fun project, so I jumped on it. And by jumped on it, I mean I put it off for a couple months until these last two weeks before the wedding, which tortured my mom a little bit. I was a little nervous about this project. I'm just getting started down this blacksmithing road, and it's a little intimidating knowing everyone is going to be looking at this up front in the wedding. Some people might argue that the attention will be on my sister in her wedding dress, but I know the real truth that the main focal point of the ceremony will be this candlestick holder. So, pressure's on. I heated up and flared the ends of the 3 8 inch square bar I decided to use, and then reheated it before curling the tip around. My sister didn't have too many suggestions for what she was looking for. She just said she wanted it to hold three candles and be around a foot and a half tall. Other than that, she left the design up to me. I was originally thinking it would have three legs, so each leg could branch out and hold the candle up top. But after making three legs and holding them together, I realized four legs was going to be a lot more stable and would work better for the stem where they would all be attached together since I'm using a square bar which has four sides. I drew a shape on the table and then worked to make one of the legs match it as closely as possible. I still don't have my forge up and running yet, so I'm stuck using the oxycetylene torch. This is slow and inefficient, but I think one of the nice things about it is you can really isolate the area you want to heat and bend. I think this is easier for me since I'm such a blacksmithing noob. Once I finish this first leg, I use it as a template to give the remaining three legs matching bends. Well, matching to the best of my ability. So I wanted to have the legs come together so only their corners touched and it was nice and symmetrical going up the stem. I felt like this was going to be hard to do, so I cut another piece of the same material that will be hidden in the middle, which will really help to attach the legs evenly. I started off by clamping two legs on opposite sides of the center piece. It took a couple tries to get them positioned correctly so that it was straight up and down, but I eventually got it. Then I put a couple small tacks on these pieces to hold them together. The tacks will be hidden behind a couple decorative bands I plan on wrapping around the top and bottom of the stem. I'm sure blacksmithing purists would scoff at me using my welder as much as I do, but I definitely need it. I carefully ground the weld smooth and then clamped on the third leg before checking level again. I got it welded in place before lastly welding on the fourth leg. This worked really well for making sure all four legs sat down flat and one of them wasn't raised up more than the other, causing it to wobble. I'll definitely be having my sister sign some legal documents, absolving me of all responsibility if this thing tips over mid-ceremony and causes everything to go up in flames, but I'll still be doing my best to build this sturdy enough so that doesn't happen. I just eyeballed this first arm, bending it out and up. Once I was happy with it, I laid it on the table and traced the bend with my sharpie so I could match it on the other side. This is where being able to isolate the heat to a certain spot came in handy again. I would heat and bend just a specific spot on the curve until it matched my line and then move the flame forward and heat and bend that spot. I did this five or six times until I had a matching radius on this arm. The metal bends much more at the hottest spot and it cools quickly too. So it's really easy to control where the bending is taking place. I had a little bit of tweaking to get them lined up across from each other, like if you were looking at it from the side, but I was happy with it eventually. I measured up from the table on both sides to mark a cut line, making sure they were the same height. I thought about stopping the project here and turning this into a ninja weapon. I've been a lifelong fan of Raphael. But I realized if I didn't get this done, my sister would probably do more serious physical damage to me than I could defend against, even with my new ninja sai. So I kept going on it. 
I wanted to spiral these top two center pieces so that all four uprights would be in a single line. I cut a piece of 3 8 inch round bar that fit tightly in the middle and tacked it in place temporarily, thinking this would help keep the two pieces spaced evenly as I heated and spiraled it. It worked really well actually. One thing I've learned is that you really need to heat away as past where you want the bend to start, otherwise the bend will be a lot shorter than you planned on. Also, for a spiral, it's really important to heat the whole length of the spiral evenly, if you want the bend to be even. I cooled it off and then cut it to length. The top tacks on the temporary centerpiece I placed high enough that they would be above the cut, but the lower ones I had to carefully cut without cutting into the square bar. And the round bar popped right out of there. The last thing I wanted to do was to flare the ends outward just slightly, just to give it a little bit more character. The next thing I needed to work on were the three circles that the candles will sit on. I thought about cutting these out of some sheet metal with my plasma cutter. Then I had the thought of just using some large washers from our bolt bin. I grabbed a couple of smaller ones too, thinking I would stack them together. So the platform would be kind of graduated up from the square bar. After grinding off the zinc coating, I centered them on top of each other and clamped them down to the table. Then I TIG welded them together. I think I'm finally getting the hang of TIG welding. It's about time. I bought this welder over three years ago now. TIG welding is so much more precise and controlled than MIG is. But man, MIG is so much easier and quicker. I heated the washers up red hot with a torch and then dunked them in the bucket. This makes them look more like the hot rolled square bar I used for the rest of the project. It takes off the rest of the zinc coating. Plus, it's just fun throwing a piece of metal in the water bucket when it's that hot. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to hold these circle pieces in place while I welded them from underneath. I was sure they would turn out crooked and off center. But then I realized I could stick the center of the candlestick through the slot in my welding table and have the two circles sitting flush with each other on the tabletop. I checked it for square before welding it solid. The top one I had to just eyeball a little, but I think it still turned out all right. I was really glad I twisted the center two pieces. I think it flowed with the rest of it a little better now. The last thing I wanted to do was to wrap a couple decorative bands around the top and bottom of the center shaft hoping to hide my small welds and give the candlestick colder a more finished look. I tacked one side of the metal strip and then heated it up and hammered it around the shaft. Once I got it back around to the starting point, I cut it off with the angle grinder and heated it back up and then hammered it down into place. I then carefully welded both sides together. I've learned that if you're careful with your welds, and try to keep it within the width of the strip. You can then grind it smooth and heat it back up one more, one last time. And you can hardly even tell where the seam was after all that. My mom stopped by to check on my progress. She's a little more careful now to only poke her head in when the camera isn't on. She had the idea though of wrapping some small rod around the shaft as well and I thought this was a really cool idea. I decided to give it a try, and I really liked how it looked, but I felt like it also needed one more band on the top and bottom, which I think kind of enclosed it and made it look like one solid band. I really liked how the round bar looked between the solid strips. I think it set it off a little and gave it a little bit more of a unique look. And that was the last thing I had to do on it. I grabbed some sandpaper and gave it some sanding. This cleans off a lot of the mill scale and leaves a nice texture on the metal. A lot of the edges get a little shiny, which I think looks nice. Then I wiped it all down with some lacquer thinner to remove any oil and dust still on it. This also accentuates the difference in color between the shiny metal and the dull metal. Makes it pop a little bit more. I hauled it down to my barn to put a coat of my homemade linseed oil and beeswax on it. I've been using this wax a lot lately and, and I've been really happy with it. On the door handles of my barn, I did a little experiment and coated one handle with clear spray polyurethane and the other I used this beeswax and linseed oil mixture on it. 
And the beeswax has prevented rust much better than the clear spray. I was really surprised. I wipe on a nice thick coat of the wax using a rag. And then I come back and wipe off any excess with a clean rag. And that's it. This project is done. I really wanted to see what it looked like with candles lit on it. But since I'm a guy, I had not a single candle in my house. I ran down to my grandparents' house and luckily my grandma came through for me and had three matching ones and was happy to let me borrow them. Well, I'm glad this thing turned out well and isn't an attention-stealing disaster. So everyone at the wedding can be focused on my beautiful sister, as they should be.